In this video, we will be looking at Intersect with Model. So it opens up like the other tutorials with this introductory sc screen. And then clicking on two, we see very interesting shapes made out of just SketchUp. They'd like you to right click on the objects and also look at this Intersect Faces option on the context menu, the right click context menu. These shapes were made using intersect faces. Click on tab three. This is the first introduction to it. It's a simple shape here. Uh, it looks like the two pieces of paper intersect each other, but they're really bypassing. You see there's, there's no line here. And so if you select that top portion and try to erase it, the bottom goes away too. So in this case, it's all one piece. They're basically bypassing each other. They've not actually, the surface has not been broken and so they're one piece. Click on tab four. So they say one thing you can do is to draw a line to separate the two planes. So using the line tool, I'll click here and then click over to here. And now, because I've done that, this plane has now been separated. Click on Scene Tab 5. Now I can go ahead and select the top portion and delete it, and the bottom portion remains because they are separate. They've been separated by that line. Click on Tab 6. In this example, they want us to carve out a sphere shape from this cube. Right now, you can see that they are basically bypassing each other. And so we could theoretically draw lines like we did before, but that can become very tedious. You see there's a lot of little lines we'd have to draw on a lot of surfaces. One thing we can do, however, is use that context menu of intersect with faces. So if I select the entire model that we see here and then right click intersect faces with model, it automatically is creating these little lines all around this perimeter. And then I can just right click on the sphere and erase to erase the sphere. And then clicking on tab seven, it says erase the yellow lines of the cube that are left over. So go ahead and do that. And there we can see the sphere shape carved out of the cube. Click on tab eight. In this part of the exercise, what is intended is that we need to cut a hole so we can get into the igloo. Right now we have an igloo shape with an igloo entrance and we want to try and get in there. And so they say, hey, using intersect with model is the way to get all these little edges to connect together. So they want you to select, triple click on the object. So using the selection tool, triple click, right click, intersect faces with model. And then clicking on tab nine, they zoom up on this area and you can see that the lines have been drawn that they weren't drawn before. If I undo, you see the lines aren't there. So originally they weren't there. Then if I redo, you can see the lines back here again. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and start deleting faces and, that are intersected. So click on Scene Tab 10, and they basically want you to erase all the yellow lines. What I like to try and do is double click on the back here, and by doing so, I select the edge and the surface, and hit the Delete key on the keyboard. Not the Backspace key, but the Delete key on the keyboard. And that deletes quite a bit of the geometry that we don't need here. These next step, just use one click to select only the surface. And hit delete again, select the other surface, delete, and the underneath, delete. All we have now are these lines to contend with. I find this is the best way for this particular geometry to erase items. Now I can go ahead and either use the eraser tool or use the delete key, the select delete method and get rid of the rest of the lines. So select delete would be select this line, delete, 
key, select this line, delete key, select this line, delete key. Using the eraser would be to just click on that line with the eraser. So either way, it's kind of doing the same, same thing, but using the eraser or the delete key. To be even more exact and get more of the lines, because these lines are on the same plane, we can erase them with the eraser tool as well. Just click and drag across the line, and when you let go of your mouse button, the line will disappear. These lines in the model can be erased because they aren't bounding edges. They're actually just on the same plane. And we can see this more clearly when we go to View, in geometry. And all these softened edges that create this spherical shape and this arch now clearly can show you which lines are bounding lines and which lines are just separating the same plane. Therefore, if I select these lines with my eraser tool, the plane doesn't go away. That surface stays intact because its bounding edges have not been erased. Same thing for the underside of this arch. As long as I pick these lines that separate a single plane, then the plane won't disappear. If, however, I do get a bounding edge, such as this edge here, look what happens to the model. Since the edge is gone, so do the planes disappear and the model becomes destroyed. Always do undo or you could draw the line back in. After seeing this, let's go ahead and go to View, Hinge Geometry and get it back so we can continue working on the model. Underneath, same thing. It can change color. It's just the line doesn't want to go away. And then on the inside as well. We need to be somewhat careful though, because we might erase the wrong line. And I'm just clicking and dragging this eraser across this line. And that is cleaned up nicely. Click on scene tab 11. Here we see uh, uh, one of the uh, sketch of people, Josh, and he needs to get that furniture in the igloo so you can watch TV on it. And really this is a little exercise in using the move tool and also the rotate tool. So let's go ahead and work with this. I'm going to zoom up on here and I will look at the TV first and get the TV on top of the table. Use the selection tool to select the TV just one click. You don't want to do two clicks on the TV because if you do you'll go inside the component, the world turns kind of grayed out, washed out, um, and that's not what we want. So click once outside, so you just have one click on the TV. So double click will get you in the component, one click away will get you back out of the component. So one click on the TV, and then we'll use the move tool, it's this here, or the keyboard shortcut is M. And I'm going to scroll up to a corner here, I'm going to scroll up to the bottom corner down here. When using the Move tool, you want to select from where to where, or select the two areas or the two pieces that are going to be touching each other or connecting with each other. Well, I know the bottom of the TV is going to connect with the top of the table, so I want to select a point on the bottom of the TV. Any corner or any edge of the bottom of the TV will work just fine. I'm selecting this one. Click. By clicking, I have now basically have picked up the TV from that corner. I'm going to zoom out here a little bit. If I can, sometimes I can get it right on top at once. It looks like in this particular orientation, in this view, I can get that TV sitting on top of that table. Sometimes it's not quite so easy. In this case, I can just click and the TV is fine. But what if I had a tr problem and I couldn't get the TV to quite line up exactly right on the table? It happens sometimes. What I like to do then is still pick it up from the base because I need that to be touching the top of the table, but I will lock it in one orientation first. In other words, instead of trying to go in the green, 
red and blue orientation all at the same time, kind of diagonally and at an angle, I will lock it in one. Now, a lot of times it's in the blue axis, the up, the, the up and down axis. So I hit the up arrow key on my keyboard, and that locks it in the blue. Then what I would do is put my cursor on top of the table and click. So now the TV is floating in space the correct height to land on the table, and then I can select the bottom of the TV and move it across. Again, in this particular example, when I had it before, I could do it in one fell swoop. I could do it all at once. But sometimes if you're moving things around, you might need to move in one orientation or one axis first and then in the other two. Well, this is coming along pretty well. However, it's kind of slightly angled. I, I'd like to try and straighten it out to look straight out from the, the, the table. I will use the Rotate tool. The Rotate tool is just under the Move tool, and it looks like a couple of arrows chasing each other. The keyboard shortcut is Q. So if you type in Q, you'd, you'd get that tool. Clicking on it, my cursor changes to, looks like a protractor, and the orientation will change. In other words, it will be red, green, or blue, depending on what surface I'm rotating on. Basically, that means if it's rotating against the blue, it's perpendicular to the blue axis it's rotating. Rotating against the red, the red axis, the green axis. It depends on which way it's going to, going to rotate. I do want it in the blue. And to lock it in the blue so it doesn't move around, like it does here in this example, where it's moving around and it's changing the, the angle, I'm going to hit the up arrow key. Hitting that arrow key on the keyboard locks it in one orientation, that, that up orientation. And sure enough, this is, this is the blue orientation is, is locked and it's not going to move around. If I hit the right arrow key, it would be locked in the red, left, green. So blue is what I want, so I hit the up arrow key. The way the rotate tool wants to work is you need to locate what point it's rotating around. Then you need to locate the other end where it starts the rotation. I, I tend to call it the zero angle, the zero point of the angle. And then which way it's going to go, see this here. So the first thing is the point it's going to rotate against. I'm going to choose this back corner. That's, that's pretty much going to be a fixed point. I, I know I don't want to rotate off the table. This is pretty close to the edge. That looks pretty good to me. Click. Now, where is going to start rotation? Where's the parts going to start rotation? Well, I'm going to click right here on this point of the TV. Click. And now you can see what I'm talking about. The one point is fixed and the other point can be moved around. As I move back and forth, I can type in any angle I want at this point. In other words, if I go this way and type in 30 degrees, it's going to go towards the, the back here at 30 degrees. If I go forward, type in 30 degrees, it's going to go forward 30 degrees. In this case, I want to parallel with the front, and so I'm going to just kind of move back and forth until my cursor says on green axis, and that is parallel with the front of the table. The tables in our, our, our orthogonally lined up. Click. So now the TV is done. So three clicks. One click for the place that rotates around, one click for what I call the zero angle or the starting point, and then the last click is which way you're going to go and, and how much degrees you can type it in, or you can just line up with one of the axes. The TV is in position. The next thing is the chair needs to be facing the TV. So hit the space bar to get your select in, and then click on the chair. M for move. At this point, I'm going to do a relative move. The first one had a specific point. The bottom of the TV had to touch the top of the table. In this case, I just need to have this chair in the front, not any specific location. So I'm just going to grab a point out here, click, and I'm going to move it across something like this, click. Again, there's no, no magic on the distance as long as this chair is sitting on the ground, which it's on the ground plane in this model, and, and so it's fine. The next thing is rotation again. We're going to do the same rotate tool, type in Q for rotate. And when you get close to the component, because this is a component, when you get close to the component, you'll see you have these little grips that you can choose from, like the origin of the chair or one of these corners over here. There's different places on this 
uh, box that's created that I can rotate around. I'm going to go ahead and select this origin of the chair, which looks like it's right in the middle of the chair, which is great. Click. I'm going to rotate against that. Then the other spot would be this chair leg here. Click. And then I'm going to rotate in this direction or the other and type in 180 for 180 degrees. Enter. And there it is. The chair's turned 180 degrees. It's facing the TV. It's facing the table. Looks good. The last thing we need to do is get that TV and chair and everybody inside the igloo. So <clears throat> space, hit the space bar to get the selection tool. We will select the chair. Hold on the control key and select the table and then select the TV and let go of the control key. If you're using a Mac, you'd use, I believe, the shift key. The chair, the table, the TV is selected. Type M for move. The cursor changes to the move symbol so we know we've got the right thing. And then I'm also going to do a relative move again. I'm going to click out here somewhere, click, and then kind of slide in a little bit and then click again. So now that's in there inside the igloo. I decided to use a relative move and out here so that I don't snap to things again on the model. In other words, if I was too close to the, to the entryway, I might, might snap to the entry or something. And so by out here in this kind of white space, I knew I was going to get pieces inside the igloo pretty well. So that's it. That's the intersect with model tutorial.